The second thing I think we need for this is we need to know how to pray the Bible back to God. We need to know how to pray the Bible back to God. If somehow there is a, a lamp that could give a pastor three wishes, and I could rub the lamp, and they say, you can have three wishes for Crossview Church, one of them would be that we would be a church that knows really, really well how to pray the Bible back to God. And you might say, that's a really odd wish. But I tell you what, this practice has really transformed my prayer life, and I would say it's transformed my life. I ran across this book by a guy named Don Whitney called Praying the Bible. It's a tiny little book. I totally recommend it. It's a very quick read. It will change your life. And the premise in this book is something we can all relate to. He says a lot of times we don't pray very long at all because we find prayer boring. It's boring. And the reason it's boring is, he said, because we all pray for pretty much the same five or six things. We pray for family, our future, our finances. We pray for our work and school, a Christian concern or a crisis situation. Pretty much all of our prayers can fit into those categories. And that's okay. That's a good thing. You should pray for those things. But what happens is when you're praying the same five or six things over and over, and you pray it the same way, using the same words, no wonder all of a sudden it gets boring. And you wonder, it's like the prayers hit the ceiling and fall down and don't have any effect. Because it feels like we're just repeating this tape over and over and over. But when you pray the Bible back to God, with those five or six things in mind, it changes everything. It gives you a whole new language of prayer. It's like if you take Psalm 23, and you open your Bible and you read, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leaves me beside quiet waters, he refreshes my soul, and then you pray, Lord, you are my shepherd. And then when you look at wanting to pray for your family, you can say, Lord, will you shepherd my kids? Will you shepherd my kids because you can shepherd them better than I can? You're the great shepherd. And with a shepherd, a sheep draws close to the shepherd. Will you draw my family close to you? And will you shepherd them? And will you be there in a way that they would lack nothing? That they would not want And God, I bring you my heart that's full of anxiety and full of all these anxious thoughts. Would you lead me to green pastures? Would you cause me to lie down by quiet waters? Now you're praying the Bible back to God and you're praying those same five or six things but with a totally different language. And you can do that with any scripture. You can look at verse 21 of James chapter 1. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted into you. God, I'm full of filth and all these evil thoughts come into my mind. Will you help me get rid of this? Will you help me to accept your word that is planted inside of me, which can save me? You pray that back to God. Many of you started the Crossview reading plan, and that's great, but don't just read the Bible. Each time you read it, pull a piece out and pray it back to God. And you could run that list of your five or six things, and you run it through God's word. It totally transforms your prayer life. Doing this doesn't just have us read the Bible, but it has the Bible read us. And that's the relationship that James is getting at that moves us from brokenness to wholeness.